Hi, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in today. 503 crankshaft. This is going to be a truing video. One of my viewers uh, said, well, I saw what you did with that 447 crankshaft. Could you actually show us how you do it? Well, let's do that today. In order to be able to get the correct and consistent readings on the runout on the concentricity or the straightness of this crankshaft um, that I'm going to test, I need a fixture to put it on. This is the fixture. It's extremely solid. It's all steel. It doesn't move at all. If there's any movement in it, I'll never know where I'm at. So I have to have a super strong, super rigid fixture to do this. So I need to take readings from four positions on the crankshaft. So I need to make sure that all of my dial indicators will be at the center height and that they're free to operate. I need consistent readings here. Now that I've laid the crankshaft in here, we'll notice that it's supported by these two bearings here. Okay, that's what is holding it in place. I'm not holding it by the center. I'm not holding it in the ends. I'm holding it by these two bearings, which is the specified way to do this for a Rotax aircraft engine. This is the service instruction that comes with every new crankshaft, the 503, 582. It's in the bottom of the box that it comes in, and it instructs you on how to support it and how to take readings on it. So as we can see, it's supported under this bearing. It's supported under that bearing. Uh, this one here represents like a 582 style crankshaft. Uh, and then we have the pickup points of where we want to put our dial indicator at the PTO end in the center bearing and the other center bearing. And then at the mag end, uh, which is right beside the keyway, uh, the key that sticks out of the crankshaft actually. So this is how you're to affix it. So this is what I've done. It's supported right here and it's supported right there. So you know, all the dial indicators are all set up. So let's take some readings and see what our numbers are. So now that we're all set up in the proper fixture, I'm going to take my readings. I'm going to use the connecting rod and from above going up and down, I'm going to rotate the crankshaft and I'm going to take my readings and record them. And um, so the PTO is a thou uh, and a half. This one right here is a half a thou point zero 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 five. Reading on this one is the same point zero 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 five. And what kind of a reading do I have on the Mag and I have two thousands on there. Zero, zero, two. So I recorded my readings now. Well, here's my readings. So on the mag position, two thousandths of an inch, a half a thou, a half a thou, and one thou and a half. The max is point zero zero two in inches. So I'm at the max at the mag end. I'm pretty close to it at the PTO end, and I'm real happy with the middle. So I can make it better than that. So let's try and see how straight we can actually make this crankshaft before it goes back into service. So let me go over some of the theory of how I determine where the problem actually is. So let's look at it from what I would call the side plane. So we're going to have uh, one of the flywheels right here. Uh, center goes off. We're going to have uh, a pin goes through. We have the other flywheel here, and then we're going to come out here, and this is going to be the mag end. This is where the little keyway is here. So we're taking our indicator from here, 0 0.002 inches. That was the reading we got. 
Okay, so let's figure out how could we get a reading like that? Well, could this be the space in between here? Could this be in? Maybe it's out. So what would happen if this was in? If these two move together, then this would turn this way and this would go down, correct? Right, it would go down if it was in. So, of course, the opposite if it's if it's wide then if it's wide this way this goes this and the mag would go up so depending upon where the connecting rod pin is because remember this is where the connecting rod is on here then I, that's one plane that i can understand which way it's out now on the other plane is if we were looking at it from the very end. So visualize we're looking at the very end. And here is the center right here. Okay, and here's the crank pin. We'll put the crank pin at the top just to keep it the same. Okay, so then the, the connecting rod comes up off of here. Now, if everything was perfectly aligned, we would look right down the side of it and they would all cover each other. But maybe that's not the case. Maybe it goes, and of course I'm way exaggerating here, maybe it goes like this, and this is the center there. What, what have we got then? Well, we have the case where it's splayed like this. It's turned on the pin. So, when we're getting readings, then depending upon where the, the pin is, we can tell where it's going to be over which way or not. So I'll show you that in a practical aspect uh, when we get back to measuring this crankshaft here. But So these are the two ways that it can be out. It can be pinched in here, it can be too wide here, it can be splayed out here, or it could be a combination of a little of each. This is what we have to determine so that we can get this straight. Now of importance in this setup is that the, the gauge is on the back side away from me. Uh, that for me just helps me get a better handle on which way I need to go. Um, it's not the only way to do it, but it's the way I do it. Now I also I start with the pin at the top. Okay, so I'm, I'm at zero right there. So now let's take the pin and let's put it at the very bottom and see what dimension I get. And I'm back to zero again. So what did that tell us? So remember when we were looking at it from the end view, that just told me that it's not twisted. It's not twisted on the pin because with the pin at the top or the pin at the bottom, I get exactly the same reading. There's no change. So where am I going to find my two thousands? 90 degrees to that. Okay, how did I get 90 degrees? Okay, I started with the pin at the top. The pin's at the bottom. There's no change. That is the movement this way of the flywheels. But the spacing in between, that's where I'm going to get it. So to check the spacing in between, I'm going to put the rod facing me. It's already moved down to a thou on one side, and it's over a thou on the other side. So that's where my 2000s is, is right in this. So it's either pinched in here or it's too wide here. And of course, if it's too wide, then this will move this way, and this will move that way, and that's exactly what it did. So just to show you the difference it makes, I'll just give it a little pinch with the pair of pliers here. And if you keep your eye on the gauge, you'll see it goes down to zero. Okay, and I let go and it goes back up. So the correction that I need to do on this one is not a dual correction, so I don't need to turn it this way at the same time. I just need to, to, uh, to pinch it in. So that's what I'm going to do now. My plan of action is exactly opposite of the pin, which would be right here with, in line with the other pin. 
right there, I want to top it right there because I want to close it up just a tick. Okay, so nice heavy brass hammer. Notice it has a lot of uh, divots in it. Uh, that way I don't want to make marks on the crankshaft. So when this gets a few divots in it, I run it through the mill and uh, flatten it out again. So here we are here. And so we're going to be, here's a pin here. I want to tap it right there, half right across, absolutely across from it. So see if I can get this on the camera here. Hold the rod out of the way. Oh, and there we are, and give it a little wrap right there. Okay, so now we're going to put it back in and check it again. Okay, so let's see what result that I get out of that. I'll zero the indicator. My pin is at the top, and let's rotate it and see what the maximum run out is. It's about a thou right on. So where is it? So I got rid of half of the error with that adjustment. So let's find out, is it skewed? So here's my pin at the top and my pin at the bottom and it reads exactly the same. So we'll go back. So it, I think it's gonna end up needing more of a correction because I'm on the left side of the zero with the pin on this side and when I put the pin on the back side, I am on the right side of zero, so it's out a thou. Now while I'm on here also, I'm just going to quick check the other end. And the PTO is about a thou and a quarter. Because whatever you do at this end is going to affect the other end. So, so I'm going to carry on now, and I'm just going to give it another bop halfway across, exactly what I just did. Then we'll put it back on and see where we're at, and then I'll check the PTO end. So here we go. I've got it right here. I'm just going to give it the same little tappy I gave it last time, right halfway across. All right. And back on we go. And okay. So I'll start with the pin at the top. Let's see what we got here. Pins at the top here, just zero it just because. And see where we go to. So we're a half a thou. And I'm at the top again. Okay, so zero it. So it's a little bit past. So let's go on the same premise again. Let's go with the pin on this side. And I'm a bit left of, of zero, about a half a thou. And I'm the same. So that adjustment then didn't change a thing. When I am at the top, I'm at zero. And when I'm at the bottom, I'm at zero. So it needs another little tap in the same place. So I'm just going to carry on and do that. I'm not going to move the camera every time. You've already seen how I do it. And there we go. Okay, so back in we go again. Centered up in the right place. There we go. Start with the pin at the top. I'm trying to zero it. I normally don't zero it. I just see where it goes. Okay. So, pin at the top, I'm right on zero. Pin at the bottom, I'm one thou. So that means that it's actually twisted a little bit then. It's pinned towards me. Is a little bit to the right it's about a half a thou on the right side and it's about a half a thou on the right side so now see where it changed so now this is where the error was before now it's the other way so pin at the top on zero pin at the bottom one thou so now it needs a little bit of a tap to take it so which happened what happened here is that 
when it goes that this has gone in that direction. So when we think of this now, it's 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 got a little twist in it. So it needs a little tappy on the one side. So when the when the pin is low and I get a higher reading, I'm gonna strike it on this side right here. So I'll just put a little I just put a little X on it there just so we know where it is. Okay, so I'm going to take it away again. And let me see if I can get this in the camera here. And there's my X right there. And, and there we go. That was not a very hard hit, of course, as you can see. So let's see where we're at. What do we get? This moved over here again. Okay. So, okay, so pin at the top, I'm a, I'm a half a thou left of zero. Pin at the bottom, I'm about a quarter thou from zero. Pin to me, zero. Pin away, it barely moves the needle. So let me focus in on this so you can see what the, what the final result is here. And, uh, whoops. And there we go. Okay, so this is where I'm at. So there is moved a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left of zero. So zero and just a tick. I call that like a quarter of a thou. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with that. So now the uh, one adjustment can affect all the other adjustments. So what do we got in the center? Let's see what those guys do now. This one isn't moving even moving the needle. Uh, this might be a quarter thou there. And now what do we have at the PTO end? Because this is normally where now I'm going to have to make another adjustment. So let's find out what we got here. So we have, it's a little less than it was, about a thou and a quarter. So I'm going to go through the same process now on the PTO end. So let's figure out what we need to do. So I'm going to start the same way again. I'm going to start with the pin at the top because this is the same as the other end. So the pin's at the top and I'll just zero it just because it's easier that way. And then I'm going to put the pin at the bottom and it's one thou off. So there's a little bit of twist in this. And I'll have the pin towards me, which is going to, we're going to check the spread on it now. And it has very little. It just, I would say there's no real spread on this one. So this one is just a little bit, a little bit skewed this way. So we're going to have the, the, uh, the pin up and we're fine where is our high reading. So that's the low reading. So we'll go, we'll zero it right there with the pin on the bottom. We'll go to the pin on the top. So that's our high reading. That's a thou and a half. So it really hasn't changed from when I started. And then I'm going to need to give it a strike uh, right here. So I'll just put a little mark on it right there. Okay, so I'm going to take it away and I'm going to give it a little strike right there and see if I can rotate it a bit. And back in we go. Okay, so we'll start with the pin at the top and the pin at the bottom. And I have a visitor here. There's a little fly in here that just came in and just is just here to annoy me today. Um, so I'm at 1,000. So here, what I'll do is I'll just zero that. I'll come back to the top. And I'm at about, let's see, I would say that's about three quarters of a thou. And that's at the bottom. So it's about halfway there. So let's find out what the spread is on it now. So the rods towards me, it's a little bit to the right of zero. The rods away from me and it's right on zero. So I think what I'm going to do is the biggest out is the rotation of it. So I'm just going to give it another little tap right here.
Well, see that one I tapped a little harder than I wanted to. But we'll find out if I'm way the other way or you have to be patient when you do this and uh, okay so I'm at the top and there I'm re-zeroed I'm at the bottom and I'm zeroed it's basically the width of the needle and so so rotation wise now I'm good so let's bring the pin towards me I'm a little bit to the right of the zero and let's bring the pin away and I'm the same amount the other way. So what do I need to do now to, to fix this? We've got a little bit of a spread issue here. So if I pinch it just with my fingers, you can see it move over. So I need actually just to give it a little knock this way. So I'm going to go right in line 180 degrees off and I'm going to go right there. And we're going to just give it a little tappy that way. All right, so that's done. And in the back in the right place. There we go. So let's see what we have overall now. So I'm down, I'm at a half a thou overall. So I think I'm pretty happy with that one. So let's see what else do we have here. Okay. Move over there a bit. Okay, get all centered. Okay. So let me take some final readings on this. Okay. So, so you can see what I'm actually doing here. It's kind of hard to try and video this whole thing, but I'm doing my best. So this is PTO end, the end that I was just making the adjustments on, of course. So I'm just going to start at the top, and I'm just going to pump it all the way around. And I would call that a half a thou. Okay, so let's move over into the center now. And again, I'm not trying to zero these things because I don't never worry about that. I'm just looking to see what kind of a change that I have. So let's concentrate on this one. And the needle moves about the width of the needle. On this position and this one. I'm looking at it from the side. I can really see it much better. It's I would say that one's just under a thou. So I'd be happy with that. It's always a trade-off on these to try and get um, everything that you want. Now this end could be gone wonky after adjusting the other end. So see I'm at the, the uh, mag end. So let's see what I have here now. Get my connecting rod around here and let's see what we have here so all right i've got a little bit over there yeah, i'd say that one's about a thou so i i gained a lot of ground there but i lost a little bit on this guy so i'm happy with the PTO end, and I'm happy with this bearing. This one and this one are still off a little bit. So, you know, remember uh, before the front of this was like perfect, uh, but now it's not because one end affects the other. So, this is where some days you go back and forth a bit until you finally get this right. So, let me figure out which way this is off. So we'll start with the pin at the top, and I'm just a little bit to the right of zero. We'll put the pin at the bottom, and yes, that's, I think, where the biggest part is. So let me do pin towards me, which is going to do the spread. It's, yeah, it's right on a thou there, and it's right back there again. So the spread is good. As far as the, the spread in here, that's fine. 
but it's a bit of a rotational deal, so it's rotated a little bit. So when the pin is low and the reading is high, the way I have the, 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 the uh, dial indicator set up on this deal, so pin low, reading high, then I need to strike it. So I need to strike it back in the same place as I did before. So I'm going to pull it off and um, give it a little tappy and we'll check it again. Whoops, come here. All right. So sometimes I get these right on right away. And whoops, I've moved this one a little bit. I bumped it. There we go. Uh, that's good. That's good. Everything is good there. Okay. So now that little tappy I just did. Let's zoom in here. Come on, let's zoom. Okay. So here we are. This is the the mag needle. You know, it just barely moves. It's like a needle width. So I'm pretty happy with that. And the one that I gained run out on, which was this one. Let's have a look at this guy and see what he does. It might be a half a thou. Um, this guy's maybe uh, a quarter of a thou. So I'd be happy with that. Okay, so here's the big test. What do we have on, on the back end now? So how much did this all change? Let's find out. Okay, so I got a thou on the back now. So where do I have the thou on the back? So you see now this is just a back and forth um, type of a deal now. What I correct at one end, then I have to correct at the other end. Um, so, uh, okay, so we'll start with the pin at the top. And just for your viewing pleasure, I'll just zero that or as close as I get to zero. And let's go to the bottom. Okay, so there was a difference of a thou there, so I'm skewed. Now let's go pin towards me. It's about a half a thou on the left. And it's about a thou on the right. So spread-wise, pretty good. The biggest error is, is in... Yes, the biggest error is in the twist part of it. So now when I have the pin up, then I need to strike it. One. Okay, I'm trying to get this to go back. There we go. So when the pin is up and I have a high reading here, then I need to strike it. So I need to go back to where I originally was and give it another little tappy right there. There's the mark from from before. So out we come again. Great patience is required for this. And they don't have to be mishandled very much actually to, to affect this, to uh, make them crooked. Okay, so. All right, so let's get this to a zero if I can. There we go. All right, so total run out now on PTO, maybe three quarters of a thou. I'm just going to look at the other ones here and see where I'm at. You can barely see that one move. The same on the other one in the center. Oh, sweet. And it's maybe a quarter thou on the PTO end. So let me try and zero this, actually zero it, and see how much total run out do I have. Three quarters of a thou. Okay, so that adjustment actually really brought this center one, this one here that was coming up high, that adjustment on the back just then, on the PTO end, really tuned that one in. So I think what I'm going to do is reassess on the back here. So pin is at the top, I'm to the right of zero a bit, and the pin's at the bottom 
really no change. So pin towards me, I'm at one thou, and the pin away, I'm at a thou. So what's the what's the deal now? Now it needs now it's a pinchy thing. Okay, so wherever you start, this just goes from one, you know, either the width or the twist in it, and then they all affect each other. Once in a while, I can get it. I'll do a combo adjustment where I'm knocking it in and around at the same time, and I and I look like a hero on that one. Uh, but that doesn't always happen. Okay, so just to get back here so I don't mess this up. So spread or uh, no skew wise, I'm good. Spread. So we're going towards me and away from me. Okay. So the high reading is there and I need to knock this, I need to open this up more. So I need another knock right there where I had, there's my mark. We need another knock a little teeny bit that way. So let's do this again. There we go. Okay, so where am I at? I'm just going to check my overall right now. That is, whoa, nice. Okay, all right, so let me uh, make sure this is all centered again. Yes, it is. Everything is where I want it. So let's check all of them all the way through. So I'll just get on a little bit of an angle here so you can see more down the needle. And oh, I can't read it. The uh, timer's in the way on the camera here. Okay. That'd be about a half a thou on that one. So I'm very happy with that. Okay, so move down. So this is the, these are the two center ones. And again, hard to, hard to read this one. And I'm going to pump this from the other end. All right, there we go. Oh, I would I would give that a half a thou. And then this one, which is the other center one. What do we got on this one? We have, uh, um, yeah, I don't even see the, moodle, the needle move, even the width of it. So it doesn't get any closer than nothing. And what do we got down here on this end? Oops, sorry. Trying to get this in the right place here. There we go. All right, so let's see what we have here. I would say that that would be, well, let me see if I can zero this and make it better to look at. All right. I call that out a half a thou. So I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, so anyway, that, is exactly what I wanted out of this. So there we go. That's how I true the crankshafts. Uh, sometimes uh, it takes a long time. It's just one end versus the other, um, but it has to be done properly. I have to be patient. So what did we accomplish here? Well, this is our starting numbers. We had two thou which was max, right? This is max. On the mag end, got it down to a half of a thousandth of an inch. This one in the center, well, nothing changed here. It's still a half a thou. <laughs> this one went from a half a thou to zero, nothing. And we went from almost max, right? One and a half thou. That's not that far away from two thou. Uh, so we reduced that one down to a half a thou. So I can't ask for any better than that. Um, if I'm trying to get this to be like all zeros, I could fiddle with it for hours and hours and hours and probably not going to accomplish getting it all at zeros. So uh, I, anyway, I'm thrilled with the result on this one. Uh, this crankshaft, the connecting rods, of course, were fine. And uh, it's uh, ready to go back in the engine. I know it's true and it's straight.
should be nice and smooth and run nice. So thanks for the uh, time that you spent with me today. Uh, hopefully, um, one of my the the viewer who was interested in seeing actually how I do this, I, I hope that you're pleased and that of course you have all uh, learned something about how I do this uh, and uh, and and take some of the uh, the mystery out of it. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, do all those other things. It all counts. Um, I'm almost close to being monetized on YouTube. What that actually entails, I have no idea. But uh, anyway, it all helps. Thanks so much. Bye now.